show you how to make a cardboard easel for use with things like books and keyboards. Now, my head will be cut off for most of this, but let me just give you a history about why I made an easel out of cardboard in the first place. This right here is a comfort type easel. It was made so you can adjust a keyboard for someone with range of motion limitations. So for instance, I could bring it lower for less of an angle or higher for more of an angle. Okay. Now, unfortunately, they don't make these anymore. And it's been a hard time trying to find someone who started making them again. So, because of that, I decided to make one out of cardboard. And that's what this turned out. Okay? It does the same thing. Unfortunately, it's not highly adjustable. But, if you play around with things, you could change the height an angle of this once you know how to do things out of cardboard. First thing to know is that cardboard comes in different plies. Okay? Now back in the day, therapists used to use cardboard to make things like seats, um, positioning devices, and it was done with something called triwall, which is basically cardboard that has many plies. It has actually, the triwall has three ply. Okay, this is one ply. Or actually might be a little bit thicker than this. And then if you put a bunch together, you could get different ply triwall. Okay, triwall, four wall, whatever it might be. For this project, we're going to use double wall. Okay, if you could see that. It has two layers of cardboard, okay? It's a little bit more sturdier than one ply. The things you'll need for this project is a utility blade, scissors, Elmer's glue, some type of ruler, Okay, for measuring and for bending the cardboard. Hot glue. And some paper bag from the supermarket. Okay? You know why the hot glue is, is heating up is that when you're cutting cardboard, you want to make sure it's square. Okay. I have an L square here, so I'm able to make sure that all the angles are at 90 degrees. Okay, because when you do bend it, you don't want it to be all lopsided. It's not going to look good, and it's if it doesn't look good, no one's going to want to use it. Okay, so if you have a straight edge, and you, even if you have an L square, I don't know if you'll have one of these, you cut along it to make sure you have a good straight edge. Okay. It's good to work on even for your splinting skills when you're cutting splinting material, okay? Just clear this table a little bit. Now I already have a piece of cardboard cut out. Okay. This cardboard here is already cut out and labeled for where the bend should be. Okay. Now I'm going to go through those measurements with you in a second. But the best thing to do is to first find a piece of cardboard. Okay, that's two ply, and that is about 24 inches long. Okay? If it's longer than that, it's okay too, because you can always cut things off at the end. It's, cardboard is very forgiving, okay? So, first thing is to find a piece of cardboard that's at least 24 inches to make the project we're doing. 
but if you need if you want to change the angles up and stuff like that and make your own easel once you know how to make this one you get a piece of cardboard that's a little bit longer to make sure you can bend and not have any problems later on okay so once you get that piece of cardboard you're going to cut out a piece of cardboard that's about 24 inches long and about 12 inches wide. That's where it comes in handy to having a regular ruler. Okay? 12 inches wide. Now the first thing is to do your measurements. The first measurement to take is from one side to is one about one inch okay you're going to make a mark now something to remember is that cardboard has little veins in them okay it's where those bumps are so there's in between each line of cardboard is where we're going to bend so your first mark of one inch should end up in between the lines of cardboard okay so right see there's a line here and here you make a mark right in between. So as we're going, even though I tell you seven inches or five inches, your mark is going to end up in between these two veins because that's where we're going to crease and bend. It's easier to bend cardboard at those creases, okay, than it is to do it the opposite way because if the lines are this way, it's hard to bend cardboard in this direction. I'm not going to go into creating other things, but in this case, this is, we want to bend at those creases, so that's where you're going to mark your measurements. So, first measurement is an inch. And then if you want to draw a line across, you can, because that's where our line is going to be creased. Second measurement is about seven inches so remember close to that crease as possible and draw a line across too I usually just mark that these I put an F on each one to know that I'm going to fold at that point because otherwise I might make a mark of where I'm going to glue something and you don't want to fold that point okay so after seven the next measurement is four and a half. The one after that is about seven inches. Okay, and at this point, the one that's seven inches, you're going to just make a line, and that's going to be where you're going to have a part where you're going to be gluing. So you don't want to fold at that point, okay? The next one, the next ones, the next few are going to be about an inch each. Okay, so you're actually going to mark, you're going to do about one, two, three, marks here of an inch. And we can cut off whatever it is afterwards. Okay. Now. Now it's time to bend. Okay? So at the first one, we're going to use our ruler, okay, and kind of just crease into it by pushing down on the cardboard. Remember, this is two ply, so it's going to be hard to bend, so you need to crease it a little bit. And then we're going to bend upwards. All these are going to be folding in, okay? So the first one. And we do the same for the next one. And make 
shorts, you get a nice bend going, bend it all the way down. The third crease, this was that four and a half inch mark. Okay. Now remember that at this point, the next line that you made, you're, you're not going to fold there because this is where you're going to be putting some glue. So that's not going to get, not going to be bent there. So now go skip over to the next line, which was that inch, and bend there. One, the next inch, two, and the next inch after that. Okay, so now this is what you're going to end up with, is first bend, second bend, third bend, okay, you're not going to bend here at this line, but then you skip over to every inch and put a crease on each of those. So when you put those together, this is what it's going to kind of look like, okay? Just like that. Now it's time for gluing. Now when I'm gluing stuff down, I like to use a mixture of both hot glue and Elmer's glue. Okay. Here I put a little bit of Elmer's glue in the part where there was the line that we made is what as I said before where we're going to have to where we're going to put some glue for this to bend and and where that inch piece of cardboard is going to stick to the other end okay so this is what it's going to look like now this the Elmer's glue by itself technically will hold after a while if you had some way to clamp this but that's why I like using the hot glue okay it actually will hold it in place so I can continue on with the project rather than having to wait and figuring out a way to hold it for that period of time. So what I'm going to do is we have Elmer's glue in there. I'm going to put some hot glue also. Again, this is just to hold it in place so I can continue my project without having to wait till tomorrow to finish my, this video. Okay, now I'm just going to hold it in place until it dries. Okay, and while that's drying, actually, I want you, if you can see this, these other pieces are going to bend in, okay? Now, if you had a longer piece of cardboard, there would actually be another, if you did one, two, three, four bends and had a small piece of cardboard at the end, you would fold this in to make a box. But what, I, what happens when you make it only 24 inches is you're going to have to put some hot glue into the crease here. Okay, and then put this, bend it over, and just hold it into place until that hot glue dries up. I don't know if we can see that. this hot glue is drying, I'm going to show you something that we use both for cosmetic reasons of making it look nice and also to make it more sturdy and, and strong. Okay, That paper from the supermarket, okay, I'm going to use 
use this. What you're going to use this for is you're going to cover the creases, and I'm going to show you how you cover the outside of it. The first thing I do, though, is usually for this crease here, is I put a, a dab of glue in the whole thing here. So once that dries off, there won't be a space in between. But what I want to do is cover that space. So with a ruler, it's better to do it this way than cutting it with the scissor, is you're going to tear off pieces of that chopping bed. Okay? And then what you would do is cover, almost like Maj Paj, the pieces, both on one side and the other. And you're going to stick them onto the cardboard that we already just bent up. Okay? Just like this. Okay? So you're going to then, while you're doing it, make sure it's laying nice and flat and there isn't any bubbles anywhere. Get rid of all the air if you can. Okay? Do that one more time on this side. Cover it all up. Now, the best thing to use is an old gift card or something you find in your junk mail from American Express or MasterCard, those little cards that they give you to say this was, could be yours. Okay. Cover the other side. And don't worry about getting your hands dirty. Okay, so basically it's going to look like that. You're going to cover that space in between with the paper that's drenched in Elmer's glue. My Elmer's glue here, I added a little bit, I think it was about three quarters Elmer's glue and the rest water and I shook it all up. Okay, It could be watered down, just makes it easier to spread. And you want to get your fingers in there because at the edges of the paper, the reason why we don't cut it with scissors is because when you tear it, you get little micro pieces of fiber from the paper coming out and with the glue, it gets nice adhesion to the cardboard. Okay, Now, the next step, and I'm only going to do one side of this, so this way I don't know if I'll have time to do both right now on this video, is you're going to make the sides. Okay. Now with cardboard, if we were doing something that required some weight bearing or some, there was going to be force on it, you would, you would put the cardboard on the top and make an outline. Okay, with a pencil and then cut that out. Being that this is not going to have any that much weight on it except the weight of a keyboard, what we need to do is try to find a way to put a piece of cardboard into this area here. Okay, because then we're going to cover it up with the paper again. To do that, you would need a really long pencil. If you get your hand in there, Okay, you could do the inside outline of the box. Okay, so you place your cardboard down and then with the pencil mark the inside. not going to look pretty when you take it out, okay? The good thing is, is you only have to do this once because the other side should be the same measurement. So you cut out one and you use, if it fits, use that as a template for the other side. So I'm just going to cut this out quick.
make sure our foot's in the space. Almost close. Okay, now, it fits into that space, as you can see, just like that. So I'm going to make another one of these for the other side. sure it fits. Okay. Now, with this, Elmer's glue will work, but you need something to hold it for the time being. So I just usually put a dab of glue in each corner, hot glue. This is really hot glue because it's pouring out. Okay. And just slide this into the space. And try not to push it in too much because you want this to kind of be level with the outside surface. And what comes in handy is you use your blade to pop it up if you need to. So you want it to be nice and level with the outside surface. And hold it in place so this way the glue helps keep it nice and Now, even though I put hot glue, it's not sticking there, so I'll put a little bit more, keep it in place, and once that's dry, I'm actually going to put some Elmer's glue surrounding it. Just, in, just like I did before for the little space in between, do the same here. Now, sometimes if you need to and it's not holding right, or instead of a clamp, you could use a piece of masking tape to hold something in place while it dries. Okay? Just a little hint for that. Let's put this other side in. Again, each corner or each couple places of contact. That glue is too hot. If you use regular small little hot glue gun, it doesn't get as hot as this one does. It's the first time using this hot glue gun. Usually I use a smaller one. Okay. Now, again, that's going to dry. Make sure you don't touch the hot glue. I'll put a little bit of Elmer's. Make sure it's level. And if I need something to hold it in place, put some masking tape. Okay. Now, the same way we covered it before, going to do it for this edge, these edges. So again, that shopping bag, you probably only need one shopping bag for this whole project because you're going to do it in about an inch and a half strips. Cover with glue. longer the better, but I'm just going to do small pieces, but if you come to an edge, okay, that's where the scissors come in. 
You're going to use your scissors and cut in the corner and fold these in. And again, don't worry about getting your hands dirty. Sometimes I'll put some extra glue on top so I can spread it and get rid of any air bubbles. Okay? Just like that. Now you're going to cover the whole thing this way. Now I haven't covered this yet, but you would need to put, just like we did this side, you need to put a piece of cardboard in here. I'll just do that quickly because it's not that big. And again, the hot glue should keep it in place. This one's kind of like you stuff a little piece in there to keep it from folding inwards. Okay, and then again. Both sides. that you have to do and fold in. But it's nice and wet with the Elmer's glue. It's easier to kind of manipulate the paper. Once it dries, it's going to be the same thing as if you get a package in the mail that has that brown paper that seals it, okay? It dries pretty hard, okay? Now, basically again, you're going to cover all the edges, okay, until it's fully covered. Now, if you do end up with anything at the edges that are rough, because it does become pretty sharp if you don't push everything down, you could use a little bit of sandpaper, sand those edges down, Okay, so whatever becomes sharp, and then once it's completed, you can paint it, decorate it how you want. You can maj maj podge it. This one's maj podge with some comic book, a comic book. Okay, just cut out a bunch of pieces. You don't even need maj podge. You could probably just use Elmer's glue and cover it all up the same way. Paint works. Acrylic paint works the best. Try not to do anything with spray paint or anything toxic, okay? If, again, if you want to change the angles around and make this more or less angle, you can do so. Just remember to change the distance from here to here and from here to here. Everything else should kind of stay the same. So for this one, that's four and a half inches, okay? You can make that larger, let's say five and a half, if for six and a half, if you want a steeper angle. Let's say if you had to make it with an, do it with an iPad or something like that. And then remember that you have to then change this to this angle here. So this should be longer also. So this way it matches up with this. Otherwise you're going to be high here and then this is going to be short and then your this needs to be changed. So play around with it. The best way to play around with it with angles is to use a single ply piece of cardboard like the one that I did before that now has become two and bend those around until you can figure out what kind of angles you want to work with. Okay? Good luck. Email me with any questions. Thank you.